our next guest. Uh, a long time stalwart in, in the industry, and uh, again, delighted to have him here. Rob Murkison, principal and partner of Intelligent Buildings. Rob, come on in, take a load off, join us. Dun, dun, dun. Good, how are you? I'm doing great. great. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, you thank you. Thank you. Glad you're here, pal. So, again, You've been part of IBCon and Realcom for basically almost since its beginning, I, I believe. The first year. Oh, the first year. So um, this year, brand new. Uh, give me your perspective on IBCon, and then I want to talk a little bit about, or Kenny and I want to talk a little bit about some of y'all's perspective now within the industry, trends and things like that. Sure. Well, I, th I think the, it is, the, the conference has always been about the intersection of technology and real estate. And when it first started, it was more about the intersection of uh, back office technologies right, in real right. estate. And with the introduction of IBCon, I, when was it, seven, eight years ago? I think it was about eight years eight ago. Years ago yeah. with the conversation turned to uh, technology in the buildings and how that was, it, that was intersecting mm -hmm. with real estate. What w I've seen over the past few years, and, it, and it's really highlight it now is we're it, it is all about the data mm -hmm. and I think you're hearing that message mm -hmm. you're hearing that message from a lot of folks but now that the the realization is that, that it's about data there, there, there's a there's a couple couple themes that I that I'm seeing first of all and I, and I think I've heard you talk to several other guests about this when you talk about data there's devices that have to produce that data in buildings right. mm -hmm. and looking at that data in a way that is an asset for the organization, it becomes a conversation of how do I protect that data? Mm -hmm. Just like you protect personal information sure. data. And I, I think that the, this, the, the, this cyber conversation mm -hmm. around, around data is something that is extremely uh, important to the organization. And, and I, I see a shift happening where it used to be if we're going to have a data-centric conversation, we talk about the data Mm -hmm. Now I think we're seeing a conversation talking about cyber first mm -hmm. before we get to the data mm -hmm. because there's no way to get to the data without addressing the cyber right. component. The second, the second aspect of, of, of the cyber is the people that are around that data right. uh -huh. and asking the questions of what are you going to do with the data and how are you going to have awareness and education alignment around what the people are going to do with mm -hmm. the data. Mm -hmm. So I, I see those as two big trends now that we've crossed into the world mm -hmm. of data centric and there's a lot of realization around that. We're seeing a lot of converged backbones mm -hmm. and wireless technologies and, and uh, normalization and, and standards and so forth. That all the, a lot of the pieces are in place, but if you don't address the cyber first, you're never going to get the data out of the building. Mm -hmm. And if you don't address how the people are going to use it in a line of organization, it's not going to scale. Mm -hmm. So, I've been participating at Realcom IBCon for years and one of the uh, critical things that happens here is your intelligent boot camp. Yes. So you've been conducting that for years here. Tell our viewers, one, what it is, and then number two is, how have you guys changed over the years when you're delivering this intelligent boot camp? Sure, sure that, it's a great question. Uh, so the boot camp is, I, I, the name says a lot. It's, mm -hmm. it's for individuals or organizations inside, individuals that are looking to get a big starter, a beginner look at how to go down the path of intelligent buildings. And, and what we do is we go over the principles that we have developed over the past 14 years that, that make sense, such as you need open systems in the buildings, they need to be converged onto a network, and that you need to, uh, in order to do machine-to-machine -machine communications, you need to normalize that data. We go, go some of that techie talk. Sure. We also talk about the, the idea that, it, that it's a cross between buildings and information technology, and we call that OT and IT, and that crossover is very important. But as you heard me say earlier, if you don't address the people component, we say the equation of a intelligent buildings or a smart building is OT, which is the building system, times people, which is the alignment piece, times IT. And if any one of those is zero or close to zero, the resulting value that you get is close to zero. <laughs> so we talk about the alignment between buildings, people, and technology in addition to having open systems mm -hmm. and convergence around that and the, and the normalization. Now, 
what what we then then do is we have some some different uh, vendors and manufacturers mm -hmm. who are innovating as in the fastest areas of these spaces. Mm -hmm. We have them come and talk to the talk to the group and mm -hmm. talk to them about what they're doing. Mm -hmm. Then in addition, and I think this is re really important, this is sort of fun, we have folks that came to the boot camp five years ago, uh -huh. and they've started down, and they've gone down the journey. They are coming back as veterans and talking okay. about their experience when they first started and where they're headed now. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really eye-opening to, I think that's really eye-opening to the audience mm -hmm. because they're getting a first-hand perspective. I mean, th this, is, this is about a forum and a, and a conversation around, around learning. And the boot camp is a way for folks that are just starting a journey mm -hmm. or it, it, it's somewhere in the journey and they want to sh share ideas or get a refresher, mm -hmm. they can come there and do that. And we do that at the pre-conference every year before the, the main real common event. Do you, uh, just one quick, and I'm gonna give it to you, Kenny. Uh, when I've attended them, they've been wonderful. And again, um, quick question, sort of a, a kind of a humorous, is there a test that one has to take? <laughs> and where, the, where can I get those answers? Oh gosh, no, no. There, there isn't a test, although I think that would be a great idea. Uh -huh. <laughs> you, know, you leave with an intelligent building uh, certificate. So yeah, yeah. Cert certification of some sort. But there is no test, it, it, is, it is a conversation, but we, we do say that there are nine words mm -hmm. that, that if we're doing a good job, a participant should leave with. And those words, and I've said six of those, are open systems, converged, securely converged networks, and a normalization, which means being able to look at the data in the building machine-machine yeah. machine communications. The second three are you have to have a good, you have to be able to look at the three pillars, which are buildings, mm -hmm. people, mm -hmm. and information technology. And you should go about an approach that starts with visibility first. Mm -hmm then move to control. Mm -hmm. so, so you want to get visibility in your building systems, then Absolutely. move to control, and then after you go visibility control, put the business policies mm -hmm. around that. So open, converge, normalize, bu uh, buildings, people, technology, and mm -hmm. visibility and control and policy. So if there is a test, the yeah. test is do you know yeah. those nine yeah. words yeah. at, the, nine at words. the end of the yeah. Intelligent Buildings Boot Camp? That's, that's great, Kenny? Well, that, that's uh, part of the magic of listening to Intelligent Buildings, the team they have, because. Uh, I think uh, one of the first times I, I came through your booth, and by the way, uh, congratulations on the very successful booth, the location, the traffic. It was hard to get a hold of you guys because you were so busy. And uh, you know, congratulations to Sean and, and to Fred Gordy because I think uh, just, just by hearing how engaged you guys were, you're doing an educational Wait, benefit. Don't, don't forget Tom because he'll get angry if we don't mention him. I was coming to Tom Shirtcliffe oh, okay, okay. because uh, he, he was, uh, we watched you too on the uh, Realcom Live, by the way, too, and it was a great session here. So that what I, tried, I wanted to get at is I, I actually had to write notes because I, I had a chance to listen to some of this thing, and that is that you're doing a, a profound benefit to the industry, and you're showing your leadership. You're one of the few companies that has the one-stop shop type of thing. So as we continue to talk about master systems integrators, we have to talk about consultants and firms that can actually provide A to Z consultancy for anywhere from a city to a, you know, a global portfolio. So I think that's, that's, that's some of the trying stuff. Uh, I think one of the most important things that you all did was the differentiation with Fred Gordy, for instance. He taught uh, a lot of us the difference between IT and OT. Okay. IT's bad, if you compromise IT, you know, screw up everybody's records and it's very really bad, you get sued. And there was one cool thing that came out of that and they said, <laughs> if the hackers don't get you, the lawyers will because of the, right. So you guys do a very good job of explaining the liability now associated at every level. So I mean, if you're selling stuff that access, uh, put somebody, you put your stuff on somebody's network, you now can become culpable to, if that gets hacked, you're, you're, you have a responsibility. So it's a shared responsibility. I think also the dialogue across the organization. I don't think people understand, again, how challenging it is to get commitment from an organization. So some of the things you introduced was the starter kits. You start at really basic. But one of the most important things you said, like the nine words, is you need commitment across the organization. So you you convert all their disparate opinions and all their disparate desires and create a common dialogue that everyone understands and commits to, and I think that's the key to your success. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and I'm going to give you a free, free ide marketing idea for you, my friend. Well, so you, based on those nine words, I think next year when you do the boot camp again, you decide whatever order that you bring that in in the boot camp, you have those four or five words on the front of a t-shirt and then the other words on the back and have the audience wear them and then turn, turn them as you address those nine key words. So uh, there's your free marketing well, concept. You. You're welcome, you're welcome. Uh, let's kind of just turn, if you don't mind, to industry trends, okay? You guys are, uh, you know, 
uh, you know, you always look at the trends at the forefront. What do you see really, you know, going into 2018? What do you think is the most important trend that whether you're a system integrator or you're a building owner or an operator or you're a technology provider, is there one or two common trends that this entire universe, the, the collaborative community we have, should be aware of or be looking at? Well, that, that, that's a great question. First of all, we have another half a year in 2017, well, right? Okay. Thank you, thank you. <laughs> so so the, the, I, I think um, the, the biggest trend uh, and, and I, I, there are a couple of things that will, I will say precipitate from that, is the availability of low cost censoring. Mm -hmm. um, censoring is, 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 is in a lot of ways, I haven't read this somewhere, and I, your guest earlier probably know, has done the research right. on it, um, but it follows Moore's Law. Mm -hmm. And that the, 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 Moore's Law was every 18 month technology, mm -hmm. I think they change it every two yeah. years now or something yeah. like that. For every 18 months technology half some price mm -hmm. and it doubles mm -hmm. in speed. And, and that's what's happening with censoring. That's, mm -hmm. that, the, the cost of the, the censoring is coming down. Uh, uh, the, and the ability to take things like looking at uh, occupancy and uh, air quality mm -hmm. and humidity and sound, and now even CO2, uh, all, all those, all that censoring and mm -hmm. getting that combined, mm -hmm. and it's providing data mm -hmm. that, that organizations now can put in at a relatively low cost and low risk, right, absolutely. and not have to have identified what all the practical applications mm -hmm. of that are going to mm -hmm. be. So censoring, I, I think it's something that is, is changing right now because it, it, the cost point is coming down so dramatically. Well, just real quickly on that, do you also think the world of IoT is helping drive that importance of the, the sensors? Oh, I, absolutely, and censoring I, I, I think is a subset of me, of, right. of, of, of I, IoT. And I, but but the, the, the idea that you can go and censor for few dollars, mm -hmm. I mean, you, literally a few dollars, sure. tens of dollars, you can put the censoring in there, is creating a data-rich environment in a building. And, and this is really, to me, for, for, especially from an integrator community perspective, is to, to understand that maybe what is needed in some cases in order to get a smart building program going, considering that people are extremely important part of that equation, that equation I talked about earlier of buildings, people times technology, right, you can't have right, zero. Right is that get the, use censoring to get data flowing out of a building before you attempt an integration effort. Mm -hmm. And if you can do that, you can build business cases so that the organization can see the benefit of getting one of those nine words I talked yep. about, yep. visibility first. Mm -hmm. You may not have control, but at least get the visibility first so that the organization can now take action because it's a, if you're around the floor real calm, and many of your viewers may, may not have heard this, obviously, is there's a, there, there is a big theme here is that there's lots of really cool technologies, mm -hmm. but you got to take action. Absolutely. And if you don't take action, you don't get results. And by doing censoring, mm -hmm. you can get visibility mm -hmm. into what's going on in the building. You may not have to have the control capabilities, but that visibility is something that's extremely important. And it also allows you to test the cybersecurity aspect of mm -hmm. things because if you have devices that are producing mm -hmm. data without an integration effort initially, you can at least test the cyber piece and you have data flowing so you can learn how to take actions and then figure out where you're going to focus on the investments on the integration side of a smart building. Well, uh, to the testament there, Rob, uh, Two things, one is I remember last year, you guys, your big takeaway was water, how water was being introduced now into the, into the big picture you know, as, as a very important utility that was becoming scarcer and yet had more stringent requirements and your, uh, greater responsibility. So I, I remember that being one of the takeaways last year. And, and I really believe what you're saying about the sensor being down to the point where uh, you know, it's, it's something that you need to take advantage of. But another thing I, I saw introduced with sensors now, it's just an automatic that these things now on people or sensors. Yeah, exactly. and, and so so every every time I took took a look around, I was seeing uh, not only was it the physical sensor that may or may not be located where it was traditionally on the wall, it might be up in the lights now, but the inclusion of the human smart sensor uh, and for not just, you know, are you happy with your input, or you, or you need cooling or heating, and you can you know, respond with a smart uh, integration there, but also uh, zoning. 
that the exact location, in many cases in our buildings, we used to rely on occupancies and schedules, and, and it wasn't, it's, not, it's not reliable. It, it was the best of, in, of its breed at the time, but now that technology has improved you know, leaps and bounds forward, so that they're saying that uh, not only do you start cutting back on your chiller, you know, or your, you know, your supply temperatures are starting to, you know, you can, because everybody leaves early on Friday, so you can take advantage of, you know, start planning 3.30 is when you want to, so, so, but the, the, so the, some of those trends, I think, are just literally uh, presenting the information to people, and that call to action is so critical, you're right, because here we are sitting there, uh, we're talking about the technology being there. Uh, Eric and I attended a, a very interesting luncheon where the guy said, we can now, we can build your dream, mm -hmm. we can sell your dream, and now we need people to work that dream, mm -hmm. but you gotta move, you gotta dream. Good advice. Uh, anything else? You know, let's kind of wrap this one up as well, um, because I don't know about you, but it's cocktail time. <laughs> and um, it, it's been a long day for, a uh, long, several days for several of us. Um, just a little bit again for the audience, you know, tell us a little bit about uh, intelligent buildings and how to get a hold of you guys and uh, go from there. Thank you, Mark. Well, I. Intelligent Buildings, you've been put in a nut nutshell, we're a professional services firm that helps simplify the journey of an intelligent building. So we have been in this, we've been in this space for 14 years, and we have seen, I won't see it all, say seen it all, but we've seen a lot, mm -hmm. and we've seen what works and what doesn't work. And over those 14 years, we've developed a methodology mm -hmm. that, that allows folks to um, start at, d at different spots, but advance down a, the same path. So, in the nutshell, we, are, we, we don't uh, represent any ma manufacturers, we don't resell products, mm -hmm. we simply are a professional services firm that help people s simplify and therefore accelerate their journey, taking the risk out of going into intelligent buildings. Um, you can reach us uh, at intelligentbuildings.com. Um, I, I, uh, you can reach me at rob at intelligentbuildings.com. I'm, I'm, as you can tell, I'm pretty excited and passionate Absolutely. about this. Absolutely. Um, I'd give you my cell phone, but my business partner probably wouldn't like, like that, that idea. <laughs> but but uh, you know, please, please reach out, and uh, I would love to continue the conversation. Great. Thanks, Rob. Appreciate Thanks. it, man. Thanks.